Welcome back. This is the first video for chapter 13 uh, of Intermediate Macroeconomics with me, Professor Liam Malloy. Um, chapter 13 is our last chapter in our long run growth section, and it's our last chapter in the sort of first half of the book, um, which gives us our uh, main tools to think about macroeconomics. And so after chapter 13, we open uh, up both literally and figuratively to more uh, extensions in macroeconomics. So we'll talk about international trade um, and we'll talk about more sort of complications uh, to make things a little bit more realistic. Um, chapter 13 is all about the effects of technological growth in the short and medium run. And so this is important. We said in chapter 12 that we really only get long run growth um, sustained long run growth from technological progress. And we said technological progress, which we re really just define as being able to produce more outputs with, you know, the same or fewer inputs. Um, and we said that's really the, the source of long run growth. And so when we, we modeled it just with A, right, A is our sort of, uh, technological variable. Um, but you know, it's the residual. And so it's a little bit unsatisfying in terms of um, our modeling, but we do think that it is an accurate assessment of, you know, firms, you know, making decisions, profit maximizing decisions in order to um, be able to uh, create the same product at, you know, cheaper prices uh, or create new products that didn't exist before. So, what we want to think about then is sort of the role that technolo technology and technological progress plays in the short and medium run. Obviously, one of the main concerns of workers is that, you know, you'll train for a job, you'll be doing a job, and then that job is going to disappear um, because the firm finds some way to do it, you know, with capital, with technology, um, and therefore you have to find something else to do. And so this has been a concern you know, from the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, um, going back to the textile industry, and it's it's still a concern. People are, are worried about um, being replaced by um, machines, by technology. I think, you know, if we think about one of the, the industries that could be most disrupted in the future, if we think about something like self-driving cars, does that mean that, you know, all the truck drivers are going to be out of work, all the taxi drivers, all the Uber and Lyft drivers, uh, all the delivery drivers. Um, and so that's a concern. And we, so we want to think about that and think about both what do the models say and then also what does uh, the data say. So it, if we're looking in the short run now, technological growth is kind of a long run issue, but we can look in the short run and we can think, okay, well, if we're in the short run, then we don't have to worry so much about capital. We can think of capital as fixed. Um, and so output then is equal to our productivity, A, times uh, the labor force, N. And we can rewrite that as N is equal to output divided by productivity. So in the short run, our model is our ISLM model, right? And so we can think of ISLM, we go back, we say, okay, output is equal to uh, consumption function. Um, plus investment, plus government spending, and LM is just the policy rate, um, which affects investment spending directly. So the problem is, is that this doesn't really tell us what's going to happen in the short run, right? We could have uh, a decrease or an increase in demand from a change in productivity. It could either be, um, you know, that we're, use, that we're increasing productivity because demand is higher, um, or it could be that we've increased productivity because of an increase in technology and people have gotten laid off and therefore demand is lower because income is lower. So there's really no uh, sort of clear answer yet about the short run effect of an increase in productivity. If we look at the data, as we saw in chapter 12, productivity growth and output growth are very highly correlated. So when we have high productivity growth, we have high output growth and vice versa. Then the question though is which direction does that causality run? So this, this graph sort of shows you both productivity growth in the pink and output growth in the blue um, and says that the causality goes from output growth to productivity, not the other way around. And so this implies that when we produce more, uh, firms invest more and become more productive. 
and it's driven by demand, right? And so in this, the argument here is that productivity growth is really driven by demand um, rather than being driven by something else. And if that's the case, then we would probably expect productivity to be associated with lower unemployment rather than higher unemployment, but we would need to look at the data. And so we will uh, we'll do that. Um, in the medium run, right, we said, okay, well, the economy tends to return to the natural level of unemployment, but it's possible that the natural level of unemployment is affected by technology. Um, and this is certainly a concern, especially whenever we have high levels of unemployment, right? Whether or not there's some sort of structural change in the economy that is uh, making a whole bunch of people uh, redundant, right? Making them uh, that we don't need their, their labor anymore. Or at least we don't need what they were doing before as labor. Maybe we need them doing something else. Um, and that's certainly a possibility. And these changes, of course, do happen over the long run. Right. If you think about, you know, anybody who was building carriages at the turn of the 20th century was not going to be in a good position 20 years later when people, you know, were all buying cars. Um, and, you know, lots and lots of positions have become n not needed because of technology. And that's actually a good thing in the long run. Um, it means we're able to do more with capital and technology than we could before and labor can do something else and labor is more productive and therefore can earn more and can buy more. On the other hand, in the short run, it definitely has that possibility of causing unemployment. So let's think about what our price setting and wage setting relation say about um, the relationship between technology and the natural level of unemployment. So we said, all right, well, we can... The nominal cost of producing one unit, right, of output uh, is the wage divided by productivity, right? And so remember, this is, we actually said this um, in our medium run section, um, but we just set A equal to one so that we just said it was equal to the wage. Um, but when we're talking about technology, then we definitely need to think about, all right, well, how much is each worker producing? And as they produce more, right, for any given wage, then the marginal cost goes down. If a worker is earning $10 an hour and produces one unit every hour, then the marginal cost is 10, 10 divided by one. But if now they can produce two units, then the marginal cost falls to five, right? 10 divided by two. So that means that firms want to think about productivity when they're setting their prices. So the price setting equation then becomes P equals one plus M, where M is the markup times the marginal cost, which now is the wage, W, divided by A. And then for wage setting, uh, this is also going to be important. We'll talk about this a little bit more in the next slide, but we, all, we need to think about um, how much the goods are going to sell for. That's our PE, so that's our expectations of prices, and how productive are our workers going to be. And so that's our expectation of productivity. Um, so now we have the wage is equal to expected productivity times the expected price level times our function of the unemployment rate and our catch-all variable Z. So, all right, so we have our wage setting function uh, and E represents the expected price level. Um, and really this is just the same as 7.1, right? Which the only difference is we added in this uh, productivity level. If we expect workers to be more pro productive, then uh, their wage will be higher, right? And they'll demand a higher wage. Um, so if we reorganize our price setting equation and put uh, the real wage on the left-hand side, um, we get the real wage is equal to productivity divided by one plus M. So this says the real wage should increase with productivity and decrease with the markup. And then assuming that our expectations for the price level and productivity are correct, so that expected price level PE is, actual, is equal to the actual price level P, and expected productivity AE is equal to actual productivity A, then equation 3.4 from the top up here, we can resolve for the real wage, and that becomes W over P, the real wage is equal to productivity A times our function of the unemployment rate and Z. Now, so the key thing to notice here is that productivity, A, is in the numerator for both of these equations. So when we graph them, right, if we're at B with a natural unemployment rate here at UN, and A increases to some value A prime, 
that actually is going to shift our curves up uh, by exactly the same amount. Um, and so the vertical distance of the shift from the old price setting equation to the new price setting equation and from the old wage setting equation to the new wage setting equation will be exactly the same. The real wage will go up uh, and the natural rate of unemployment um, will stay the same, right? And that's the key there is that as long as our expectations are correct in the price level and uh, technology, um, then there's no change from a change in technology uh, on the natural rate of unemployment. So let's look at the data, right? Because obviously this is a question for the data. Um, and if we're thinking about the medium run, then taking averages over a longer time frame uh, makes more sense than looking at the data for one year. So this looks at average annual labor productivity growth by decade uh, and average unemployment rate um, by decade. And so you can see that mostly what it looks like is there's very little relationship between the unemployment rate and average annual labor productivity growth. That's kind of what we'd expect from uh, the previous slide. If anything, it looks like decades with really high uh, labor productivity growth, so the 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, 2000s, tend to have lower unemployment rates. Um, but that's not like completely true. 1900 to 1909, we have low productivity growth, but low unemployment. Um, we don't have you know too many up here. 1930 to 1939, that's obviously crazy. That's the Great Depression, but it's kind of medium uh, labor productivity growth on average and really high unemployment. Um, so there's not a huge relationship in either direction, but if anything, higher productivity growth is associated with lower unemployment. So why might that be? Well, one thing that might be is that the expectation, so if there's a change in productivity growth, uh, expectations might not be correct. And so this is an example when there's a decrease in productivity growth, but we can think about the opposite when there's an increase in productivity growth as well. That's unexpected. Um, and so in this case, if remember the expectations um, are going to shift our, our wage setting equation, whereas the actual productivity is going to shift the price setting equation. So in this case, actual productivity increases by less than expectations. And so our wage setting curve increased more, shifted more to the right than our price setting equation shifted up. And we end up with a higher unemployment rate. And we can think of some of the decades where productivity was higher as the opposite, right? Where wage setting shifted by less, price setting increased by more, and we end up with a decrease in our uh, natural unemployment rate. So I, maybe I think that's what's going on um, in, in the graph uh, from the previous slide where you know you have these decades of, of really high productivity growth and wages aren't necessarily uh, keeping up um, and therefore we have a lower natural rate of unemployment. I mean also if what we said is you know productivity seems to be driven by demand and so in decades like the 40s, 50s, and 60s, where GDP growth is strong and companies are investing uh, a lot in technological growth and research and development, bringing out new products, etc., cetera, um, then you know, perhaps our, our price setting equation shifts up by more than our wage setting equation does.